When you think of the word nuclear, most of us think of Chernobyl or Fukushima. You know, nuclear go boom. But there's way more to this technology than just explosions. It's also an extremely efficient, clean source of energy that generates about 20% of America's electricity. So technically we can answer the question, can you run your car on nuclear energy quite quickly? Yes, if you drive an EV, then you can charge the car with the electricity that was produced through a nuclear power plant. But here is what I wondered, can you make a car that runs on nuclear energy not being charged from a power plant? Well, this technology has actually been pursued in the past. In the 1950s, Ford came up with the Ford Nucleon concept car. Now, Ford envisioned a future where cars would run on nuclear power using uranium rather than petrol or diesel to create a process of nuclear fission. Why does all of this crap mean and how does it work? Well, a nuclear reactor creates heat, which boils the water, turning into steam. The steam then drives a turbine, charging the batteries, which in turn power the motors. Now, in the Ford Nucleon, the reactor was in the trunk, so storage space wasn't exactly great. Now, I can already hear some people typing away. So what happens in case of an accident? I mean, it wouldn't be ideal if a simple bumper bash could level a city, would it? And then it's radioactive and it's just a situation that could cause some headaches and death. Now, according to Ford, the model featured a power capsule suspended between twin booms at the rear. Not exactly confidence inspiring, if you ask me, but let's say the radioactive capsule is in an indestructible space and we didn't have to worry that each trip could kill thousands of people. There are quite a few positives to this technology. It's clean. The capsule which would contain a radioactive core for motive power could easily be interchangeable at the driver's option according to performance needs or the distance to be traveled. And according to Ford, the Nucleon could go 5,000 miles on one radioactive charge. Great for road tripping. Well, the Nucleon never made it into production, and I think we all know why. I think the general population would be quite nervous driving on the same road as a nuclear-powered vehicle. So that answers it. The answer is no. Well, according to a company called Laser Power Systems, the future is nuclear, and they reckon that their concept car can go a hundred years without needing a refuel or a service. So the car can basically go and go as long as the tires are in a good condition. So what makes their technology different to the Ford Nucleon? Well, the CEO says the key is thorium, which is radioactive but not on the same scale as uranium. In the proposed car, an accelerator-driven thorium-based laser is used not to send a beam of energy but to generate heat, which can then be translated into energy. According to Laser Power System CEO Charles Stevens, just one gram of thorium produces more energy than 28,000 liters of petrol. And he further stated that 8 grams of thorium would be enough to power a car for its entire life. Mr. Stevens says an engine weighing approximately 227 kilograms would be light enough and compact enough to fit under the bonnet of a conventional car. And it gets even better. Mr. Stevens also said that it would be 100% emissions free. So pros. Drives forever, like the car will break before the engine needs a refueling. Doesn't produce emissions, so it's green and eco-friendly. And this engine could fit into any car, theoretically. So why aren't we using this technology? Well, firstly, according to Mr. Stevens, it's difficult developing turbines and generators that were usable and portable, and then combining them efficiently with the system. If they can get the technology to work, however, Mr. Stevens says, the car will wear out before the engine. There is no oil, no emissions, nothing. But here's my question, is this safer than the Nucleon? Is thorium really the key to making a nuclear powered car? Well, yes, it is difficult to make a practical nuclear bomb from thorium's reactor's byproducts. Thorium is not fissile like uranium. What does this mean? Well, a fissile material is a material capable of sustaining a nuclear fissile chain reaction, or in English, capable or prone to being split or divided. So packed thorium nuclei will not begin to split apart and explode. In other words, the chances of this material to go boom is very small. That said, it's still possible to use thorium in a nuclear bomb. So I would love if laser power systems could explain exactly more in depth on how they will utilize the thorium, where it will be stored and so forth. 
because I would really like it to know for a fact that we won't die when we drive it. If it is possible to use this technology and we can be 110% sure that we won't face utter destruction in the case of an accident, this would be the answer to all our problems. It's clean, super energy dense and there's quite a lot of thorium available in the Earth's crust. Now before I end off this video, I did a hell of a lot of research on this thorium based car. And it looks like the last update I could find was back in 2011 and we are in 2022. So I feel it's safe to say that um, this Mr. C Stevens guy didn't succeed in actually making it work because all the info I, I gave in this video is like 10 years old and I can't find any new updates on this technology. Like I'm, I'm going to look even further, see if there's any updates. I'm going to try and find the actual Mr. Steven dude's LinkedIn and see if He's got like a new website or something or if he just like disappeared into nothingness because it seems like all the cool technologies this is kind of what happens yeah do you think there is actually a feasible future with nuclear powered cars or do you think the future is electric which i don't i think hydrogen at the moment is the best option that's just my opinion let me know down below what you guys think if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. If you did enjoy it, I've got many more videos on like future card technologies and stuff like that. So I'm sure there's more interesting stuff you guys would like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?